Kyle here from allmediareviews.bogspot.com, August 11th, 2023. Um, been unable to make videos for various reasons, health reasons, family reasons. I'm still dealing with these headaches. They're kind of, it's something to do with ears. I don't know if I got it from the concerts I had wearing a mask, the ours concert back on July 7th, but I'm seeing in two weeks from today uh, an otolaryngologist or an ear, nose and throat doctor. I mean, it's long story short, long story short as possible, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's not fun. I don't know how I got them, but I get plugged ears and then I get headaches. They kind of, I take, I've been taking Flonase for it. I get postnatal drip and I have misophonia too, though, so, um, but anyway, so I'm just going to do a kind of a video blog, vinyl update kind of thing and some other things. I have some vinyl that still hasn't come in, but first thing to show though, my wife found this, and I guess this came out in 2019, but first time we'd seen it at Target. The Funko, because we have a few of these. I have the, some of the members of Police. I should show those. She's got, and like, Prince, and some, I got some members, some of the guys, the cast from, uh, or the characters from Coming to America. Uh, but this is Rush's Exit Stage Left, and the woman on the cover, you know, the famous live album from 1981. It was 81 from Rush. So anyway, um... And so the other things I did pick up, a couple things, yeah. So Fate's Warning, um, they reissued They reissued some vinyl for the first time, and they had reissues on CDs, and, you know, I have so Disconnected and um, FWX. Two albums I love, but especially FWX are not the most... Um, not the not their not the favorite not not as much appreciated the re the records that came since actually have been more appreciated oddly enough, but um, and I did that whole Fate's Warnings thing series last year of course talked about both of them, um, but these two CDs have bonus tracks, um, the, the the FWX has a couple demos with Bobby Jars on Beck who wasn't the drummer at the time it was Mark Zonder's last album with the band but they had and then it has a wish hideous mix a second mix anyways um and then the disconnected has under the um milky way which i have on that combination uh disconnected um import and disconnected and uh um inside out import it also includes um the one demo, someone every slash everything, and it's over, which is a shutdown demo, which shutdown was from OSI a couple of years later. But um, I'm kind of a completist, you know. I mean, I, are these, you know, I mean, I, I've heard most of those extra tracks, you know, but um, having like multiple copies, I don't know if these were, and these weren't really remixed or remastered or anything like that. I don't think it was just. Um, the other thing about CDs is, you know, are they going to be coming, be always in print? I don't know, but so this is 2000s, 2000, yeah. I was thinking of 2001 because 2001 is the year I saw them live, but you know, I don't know if the book's any different, not really. But anyway, so to go along with these two CDs, because really I wouldn't have just kind of gone on my way to buy these. I I might have, but they issued. Um, I got three. Fate's Warning vinyl records to show. Um, first I'll show, well, okay, I'll just go one by one again. So I have the FWX vinyl. This, I guess, had been issued in Germany, but it was pretty hard to find. Gatefold, um, double vinyl, and um, I don't know if this is colored. I haven't I like oh, took off the seal. Oh yeah, it is colored actually. Um, long story short, with yesterday, I was trying to make this video yesterday, and um, it's kind of a combination, uh, like pink or orange, more of an orange actually, orange and, and blue, like baby blue. Um, and the first disc, which includes "Heal Me," which is probably my favorite song on this album, but um, let's see. And then the second disc. Now the case is not, I would say, in, in like pristine, perfect condition, but it's fine. It was new, you know, 
That's the issue with vinyl, one of the many issues with vinyl, of course. Um, 2004. I think this is probably a, just a match where it's, yeah, it's, it's pink and, you know, another perfect day. This has those demos, so the, that's why it's a, they, they were able to stretch that out. This last side, the, the D side or whatever, side four, has the demos, um, the Simple Human demo. and. Um, I don't know. I don't know if time's ever going to be kind enough to this record where people, a lot of the other fans or new fans maybe, will will come on board with me. I know the band themselves and Jim Matheos is not, based on that book that J, uh, Jeff Wagner uh, wrote and published last year, um, I just think that this is a very good record and I don't, I don't really f find the issues with it that some people do. Um, and, and they didn't work with Terry Brown, but that was the thing. So that was the one thing about it. But the, this album, they did work with Terry Brown. This I've been wanting this on vinyl for a long time. I wanted FWX and uh, Disconnected on vinyl. So big gatefold. Um, except I think there were there was at least and you know like a Pleasant Shade of Gray and a, uh, there were like maybe one or two other exclusives that were just in Europe. Here's the lyric sheet. But um, I wanted this on vinyl for the, for a long time, and I but I, I would have had to spend like when the initial run or I don't, I, I, it was it was not it was really pricey to, to to import it from Germany. I don't even know if the pressing was as thick, but um, of course this has uh, it's like two songs aside. It's got disconnected part one and one, and then so three on that one, and then pieces of me on nothing on side B, but it's a whatever a grayish kind of thing it fit that fits the color kind of you know color scheme of color design of the record um and then let's see let's take a look at the that's side one and two side three and four or c and d i'm not sure how they're labeled um i can add something about my setup here when i'm in a different room of course this time so here it is yes this is just all still remains and distance part disconnect part two is on that side and then those those demos including under the Milky Way. So um, you know I mean this album is appreciated by more people especially some um, still remains but I think I think the whole record's a masterpiece. It still remains is the greatest part of it. So but yeah, so really great to finally get these this record on vinyl too. From 2000 disconnected and then I I found a copy of this and I don't know when this was issued just maybe a couple years ago it was 2020 or when maybe um, long day good night came out they issued they reissued or issued I don't know if it ever come on vinyl um, inside out which you know it's not at the top of my favorite uh, fates warning records but it's always a record I've, I've liked and when I visited last year when I was doing that series it's like you know it's pretty consistent I mean it is sort of like a, you know, Parallels Part 2 in some ways. Look, big poster. Kind of cool poster. But it's just always come across as sort of softer, and it's not, ha like, other than um, Monument, really. But And some of the songs kind of um, have a similar sound to them. But, you know, as a, as a huge fan of this band for, for so long, for, dec for a number of decades, it was kind of, uh, and collecting their vinyl, it made sense to eventually get it. Um, it was available not for a um, massive amount of money, but um, it's the last album with uh, drummer Joe DiBiase and sort of, in, a, in effect, like Frank DiBiase. So, Joe DiBiase, or DeBias, rather, and Frank Oresti. But Frank Oresti would come back and play on... on uh, I want to say Dark Sense in a Different Light, and possibly even, he just played like a couple solos. Anyway, and here's the actual record, which is kind of a cool green. It's like it has a new agey element, so I could sort of the green fit a little bit, but um So yeah, and to um sort of explain or express I don't know there's a download code in here. Yeah, there there's something in here. Yeah. Or maybe a CD too. No, yeah, it's like a C Yep, it's a Bandcamp download code. Cool. I should I should grab it, I suppose. You know, I have the CD. Um, 
But that this actually, now that I have these three uh, Fates Warning vinyl uh, issues, I believe, let me just show them again one more time. I have to worry about the actual discs uh, shortly after I'm finished here, but these are the last three I was missing. Um, there's really, the only thing I don't have is I don't have the live album still live, which maybe I'll have to try to find a way to get that. I know it's available. It's, a, it's like a triple maybe, because it's whatever it is. It's like an hour and a half long, maybe almost two hours. But other than that, I mean, there's the compilations um, Chasing Time, but I don't know if that would ever be coming. Oh, maybe. But it's kind of cool to know that I have the complete like studio discography from Fate's Warning on vinyl now. Um, I have a couple copies of more than one. So I'll just kind of give a glance though. It's like I've got, I'm in, this is a work in progress. This is the music record room. As you can see, I've finally, um, we bought some, well, we bought some shells right here. These are all my wife's. We're still working on that because still more records to put in there. All her records aren't even here. They're still at her, her mother's um, so it's not even you know all her records but but being able to put these on shelves and mine too that these these are crates or whatever I got a lot more to still put in um, I could finally have after you could say almost 10 years um, in a way and especially since we moved to this place like four and a half years although the, the truth is I don't I do not want to stay here I'm not really crazy about living here long term so a year from now we be living somewhere else but better late than never uh we can finally set up um some kind of semblance of a record room youtube studio for music talking about showing music and stuff like that and organizing it so um a couple pieces of news and item other items to to include here before i sign off oh there's one more record i almost forgot about that so and i noticed this it was on Discogs, but and I listened to it just a little while ago. Uh, Galactic Cowboys um, through Metal Blade issued their third record, the third full length. Not talking about the Awful Truth, they're you known as previously, but Machine Fish, um, which includes also the Feel the Rage EP, which has a couple covers, some live stuff, and a couple extra songs. Um, this came out in 1986. This is sort of a sentimental favorite of mine um mainly because this was the first record they put out this is their i don't know if it was right you know look at those cool blue when i got into them or it was 96 it came out and that was when i first saw them with king's x um but for some reason the first time i saw them i didn't think this record had been released um machine fish but anyway they issued it but but I'll, I listened to it today. I, I, see, the thing is, the significant, they, they weren't on, their first two records, I love, they they were on, like, Geffen or um, Columbia, I forget what major label it was. And they were working with Sam Taylor, who worked with King's X. Um, but this album, they were not, they, they had been dropped, or their contract was, there was just a two-record contract or whatever. Um, Machine Fish. And the, the, maybe the more significant part is that original guitarist Dane Saunier had left, and new guitarist uh, Wally Farkas joined. And while I, I really like Wally Farkas, um, I've always been partial to those first two records more than the records that came after it. That being said, I always liked a lot of this record, but, oh man, I'm... I, I, I can say good things about this record and, and the EP for that matter, the Feel the Rage EP here. I know I'm not showing it the, the second here. Um, it's a long record. It's like over an hour. Um, it's way more metal or riff driven. And the great thing about Galactic Cowboys that I, one of the great things are the, har the harmonies and the sort of subtle melodies and like little experimental psychedelic parts which are in here, but it's less. A lot of it blurs a little bit. So my feeling about this record, I'm glad I got it because I'm a fanboy, a longtime fan that goes back, whatever, almost 30 years now. Um, and I have Long Way Back to the Moon, and I have the self-titled debut. Um, 
but their other records I don't think are, have been ever issued on vinyl, but having this come out would suggest that those other records will. The trouble is with Space in Your Face, the record that preceded this, which is to me their masterpiece, which celebrated a 30th anniversary just a few, like a month ago, because it's owned by that other label, I don't know when, if and when it will be able to come out. Um, but the other ones, at the end of the day, of course, the Bud Bud and maybe Let It Go could eventually. Um, I mean, my favorites are the first song, Feel the Rage, Fear Not, Stress. Uh, I like parts of Psychotic Companion. It's long. I was just listening to, like, The Lens, I think it is. Yeah, um, In a Lonely Room, although the production kind of bugs me. 9th of June. Um, it's... It's a, it's a bit much. If you listen to Space in Your Face and you listen to the self-titled debut album, they definitely went for a little different. And there's, it's a little even more influenced by grunge than even those other two records. But um, it's still I still have a lot of nostalgia for this record, uh, Machine Fish. Um, and the Feel of Rage EP, the, the cover of Junior's Farm from Paul McCartney is, is good. It's a fun cover. The cover of I Want You, I think it's a Kiss song. The Kiss, it's Paul Stanley's credited on Discogs, but I think it's probably a Kiss song. I can take or leave, so, um, but yeah, I mean, I didn't know this, I got it for a reasonable price, and I guess in some ways it's nice, it's a double, though. One of the comments on Rate Your Music about it is, it's just too, it's too darn long. It's, it, it, it what they're doing with all these songs, they could have done with less, I don't know. Yeah, I would say that about two-thirds of it I probably would keep, and the other third I would... I would skip, um, which you don't really do on vinyl, of course, <laughs> ironically. But um, as a fanboy of, Gla of Galactic Cowboys, I just like to collect their stuff. And I, I saw it for a reasonable price. I didn't realize it. it. I guess it came out last year. It says 2022. So I think maybe almost all the Metal Blade stuff could come out, like the King's X and Fate's Warning releases. But that Space in Your Face, their, their, their finest work, that remains to be seen. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I wanted, wanted to mention, so, a couple album releases, and like, today, Small Leaks Thing Ships released their first song in about five years, approximately, A-E-I-O-U, which um, is, uh, it's good, I like it, it doesn't sound like that much of a departure from the previous music, but it sounds like them, but it's supposed to be the first single on an upcoming full length, which they still haven't included information that I could tell but um I'm a patient fan uh whatever we get I'm happy that I'm glad really happy we got that um I was I don't think I've been I don't think I've made a video since I found out about the Childish Japes album so that's what I can do here eventually hopefully I'll have a setup in here we'll all... but uh the Childish Japes album's coming out next Friday uh finally now it's called um what is it called Talked about Childish Japes here in the last, especially the last six months. Uh, Childish Japes featuring Joanna Teeters, or Tedders, Matters of Life and Death Part 1. Initially, they were writing music and they released four, five, six singles. Some of them, a couple of them are really good. But they were thinking it was going to be a double album, which would, re would suggest that Matters of Life and Death Part 2, or whatever they're going to call it, um, will be coming not probably in the, the near future after this. So. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm. I mean, sadly, that's the only really, um, like confirmed release date album still left for me right now. <laughs> Some stuff has has been announced for 2023. The Peter Gabriel album probably will be 2024. Um, there's a couple other things that I'll probably check out that ha that are listed on this confirmed release date list, but um. Sure, though, actually, which is kind of unfortunate. Empire State Bastard, Rivers of Heresy comes out September 1st. That's Mike Venart and um, Simon Neal from Biffy Clyro's side project. But the style isn't progressive metal or whatever, art rock. It's it's more experimental than that. It's, it's heavier, too, so I don't know. Um, last week we had the Toehider EP, and there's that's the thing. is The first EP came out last on the 4th of August, uh, 12 and 12, number one, Quit Forever. Just call it Quit Forever. So we're going to have potentially 11 more. He's been releasing one EP to the Patreon every month. It's like $6 a month to get access to those EPs. Although if you sign up, you get access to the ones that have already been released. But 
I'm on the fence, but I may sign up eventually and get that. But if he's going to put him out on Bandcamp like he did that one last week, I may just hold off. Although I guess there's a lot of like cool covers and other stuff that you get, of course, with the Patreons. Like I'm on the Rain of Kindles Patreon. But um, yeah, that that's unfortunately, yeah, I mean, the, the, the Toe Hider thing I'm excited about. I mean, Ben Sinister, I, I saw a comment from Dan Monk that says, the new record, the record, the full length is going to be coming soon. So that and, of course, Small League Sink Ships. Um, and there's a couple others that are like Ben, uh, that are very likely that just, oh, Dirt Per Robbins, of course, um, album. Uh, Firebird. Um, yeah, all oh, that Humina record. No one, I never bumped that. Um yeah, I mean, it's more of like, like there's stuff that just, they're not using social media to announce it. The Polyphonic Spree, more on Police, Pachinko. Polyphonic Spree's um, Savage, Salvage Enterprise, it said sometime this summer. Well, the summer's almost over. <laughs> um, you know, so th more stuff is going to be announced, but, you know, we're sitting here the second week of August, and, you know, either I haven't read the news or information about this stuff, or it's going to be like, like, Stephen Wilson's The Harmony Codex is supposed to come out on the 29th of September, according to one website, but he's never actually come out and said that. There's been listening parties in the UK, though, I think. So it's going to be coming out rather soon, but when it's announced, they they get to choose when that happens, you know. So, um, I mean, there's just a lot of other stuff that just should, you'd think announcement would be coming. Mayor Hawthorne put out a single last week, I think, The Pool, which is actually really good. So that's probably going to come out. Uh, there's going to be something that will be coming out more of that. Uh, Rain Kindo, there's just, there's stuff that seems likely, but it just, we haven't got, Giant Sky, I haven't checked the, um, Capital Cities, um, Brian Scary has two albums that are in the works that are ready, he just needs to figure out financially how he can release them, I think he's maybe already recorded them, so, um, anyway, yeah, and then, uh, a shout out to, uh, Death by Unicorn, I think it is. I've been really enjoying his channel. Um, him and I, I don't know if we'd do like a collaboration stuff, but he would be, he, he listens to a lot of the same music. He's really into new releases. I've chimed in on his videos. He's chiming in on a bunch of mine. The, the, um, the tier maker lists, which are easy to make. I'm going to, I probably try to make more of those soon. It's just a matter of work, free time, and, um, just other priorities where I, I just, medical stuff and, um, you know, worrying about, you know, family stuff, but, um, there was, like, something else, I mean, there's, entertainment-wise, there's other stuff going on, also, shout out to, <laughs> to that, uh, Heavy Debriefings on their new podcast, I really like the new podcast, it's a podcast, so it's, like, an hour and change, to almost two hours long sometimes, with him and his significant other, slash, you know, the Metal Fairy, um, going over a lot of music stuff, a lot of music stuff I don't know about, of course, a lot of metal, um, but it's still entertaining to listen to, and then a lot of other entertainment, um, pop culture stuff, news stuff, it's, it's a good, cool podcast, maybe I'm biased, because I know, uh, Josh quite well, um, so I, it's a little bit inside baseball, <laughs> but, um, and I, I've known him for so long, but, uh, it's, a, it's, if you've never checked out Heavy Debriefings, uh, he's got, like, almost a thousand interviews, he's, he's getting close to that, um, It'd be interesting if he ended up on his 1,000th interview at 1,000 subscribers on, on YouTube. But um, but anyway, yeah, I, there's other stuff coming in, other stuff in the works. But uh, sorry I haven't been on the last few weeks. But thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and we'll see you next time.